All right, so uh, I'm working on a couple of new mesh fusion procedural assemblies designed to model various sorts of frames, uh, ribbing, and tiles and such. These assemblies can produce very dimensional forms or those more in the uh, emboss deboss vein. Uh, the latter uh, should fit well with our notions of uh, incorporating mesh fusion into high poly game asset workflows. Uh, that normal map, that detailed geometry, onto low poly meshes. The assembly featured in this video generates its geometry from a simple 2D planar mesh. And uh, that's the beauty of it. Uh, the resulting forms are dynamically regenerated as we uh, perform simple edits of that 2D mesh. And here's one example of the uh, generated geometry, but uh, keep in mind, it could be an open frame or uh, raised tiles or uh, embossed grooves in the surface, all uh, generated by the same assembly. And here's our simple uh, 2D uh, planar mesh, uh, our pattern for our geometry. Uh, it can be any collection of uh, polygons, uh, n-gons, triangles, quads. Uh, this little triangle here is a missing polygon, if you were. You could have islands of uh, polygons. They don't have to be connected. It can really uh, be just about anything that lies in a plane. Now this is just a prototype, uh, but I have uh, thrown in a few little simple widgets here to control things like the width of the frame, uh, the uh, roundness, the rounding of the uh, corners where the uh, frame uh, spars meet, um, the depth of the cut, and uh, we'll look at all of that in uh, a little more detail as we go along here. And note that uh, I've got deferred updating activated with the uh, Fusion item, so you'll see the changes when the mouse goes up. Uh, but in any case, the real fun here comes from editing the uh, planar geometry, uh, the polygons and edges of this simple 2D mesh. Um, just about anything will work here, and uh, changes are reflected in the 3D geometry. The simplest notion, of course, would be to simply move some vertices around. So I've got uh, symmetry turned on here, and it's Z-symmetry for no good reason. Uh, normally I would use X for something like this, but it doesn't matter. Um, so you can just move uh, any uh, vertices around any way you like. And here, of course, our uh, basic form is just a blob, so uh, it doesn't really matter much. But with more interesting geometry, uh, the process here often involves making your uh, polygonal pattern here uh, match up with or somehow relate to uh, the uh, overall geometry of your model. And naturally you can also work on the edge level. Here I'm uh, using the add loop tool to uh, split uh, a couple of quads here. Um, or you might uh, choose to remove a certain edges. Uh, remove one here. Uh, and if you don't like it, of course, so you can always undo, get your edge back. I, I wanted that one back because I kind of like this little triangle where there is no polygon in our 2D pattern. Uh, and in fact, I think what I'll do here is uh, delete another polygon, the one just below it, and turn that triangle into a uh, pentagon, a solid pentagon on our model. Here I'm using the slice tool, uh, just uh, slicing through our 2D form and uh, creating uh, ribs in sort of arbitrary positions. And I kind of find this one particularly fun and satisfying for some reason. Uh, the dynamic nature of both the uh, slice tool and everything else uh, going on with the assembly and mesh fusion all comes together nicely. And here I'm applying a, a faceted subdivide to a few of the polygons. It gives you that kind of nice uh, structural star uh, grid effect. And uh, if you find that uh, looks a little too regular and canned, you can always go back and just uh, selectively delete some edges and uh, customize the form a bit. Or we might try a little bit of uh, edge extend to add some uh, polys. Uh, really, it is just about anything. There can be uh, islands and uh, detached polygons. You can build uh, new polygons from scratch, split polygons, bevel polygons. I mean, really just about anything that uh, contributes to the uh, 2D pattern that you have will be reflected in the 3D geometry. And of course, these patterns really are just planar meshes, and uh, they can be saved and applied to any other geometry. The assembly uh, simply takes uh, the mesh as a merge mesh source, so you could swap out uh, favorite patterns uh, anytime you like.
And as mentioned earlier, uh, you have control over uh, the width of the uh, ribs, of course, and the rounding at the corners. There's also this uh, rib sub D setting, which um, when on uh, creates uh, more squarish patterns, of course, uh, but also makes the uh, line of the ribs, if you will, uh, kind of straight and parallel. Uh, when off, it relaxes things a bit, and you get what in effect is a line width variation in the ribs as they flare out a bit when they approach the corners. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, mesh that the assembly produces. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, defusion it, uh, make it back into a regular mesh instead of a fusion source mesh, and we can see its form. Uh, this is the uh, open-ended version. You see it has this uh, set of kind of flaring open-ended cells, and uh, we can do that because of the nature of the model we've been working with. We'll uh, look at that in a moment, but it does have the option, uh, the assembly has the option of including caps on both ends of our cells, uh, as you see here, and that uh, gives us some different uh, modeling options and also just helps us see this form more clearly as we play around with some of the same uh, properties that we did earlier, varying the, the properties that vary the uh, rib width and uh, rounding and such. If we reapply this uh, capped version uh, to our fusion model as a subtractive trim, uh, the effect is the same. And uh, the reason uh, it didn't matter whether or not our form was capped uh, in this model is because it has this inner mesh. So really, we're just trimming down uh, the outer mesh and uh, revealing the inner mesh as that sort of trim to a particular depth effect often used with mesh fusion. But uh, now that we do have a capped form, a solid form, uh, we don't have to use that inner mesh. We can uh, just uh, use the form itself and just have uh, the entire volume of that mesh trimmed away from our blob here. And we get these deep uh, cuts that you see here. And um, one uh, nice thing, one uh, appropriate thing to do with this kind of a cut is uh, it's an effect I very much like where the ribs just sort of emerge from the uh, from the main surface, and usually that's achieved by just having a, more of a slight contact between a shallower contact between the trim and uh, the main surface. And to help achieve that effect, I am widening our uh, 2D pattern, and uh, that way the bottoms, the, you know, the deepest part of its cuts, sort of just meet the sides of the uh, main form of the blob there and uh, give that effect of the ribs just kind of uh, blending in to the main surface. All right, well, uh, this simple blob example doesn't really do the uh, assembly justice. It can be uh, used in much more innovative ways, uh, much more three-dimensional ways, and can be applied to uh, fusion items that contain more than one surface, obviously, uh, and all of that. And uh, even these early examples you're seeing here are just uh, early test stuff that uh, don't really stretch its limits. And uh, as mentioned, there is also a second related but different assembly, uh, which is responsible for uh, this uh, set of images you see here. And uh, we'll take a look at that in another video. All right, see you next time. Bye.